repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. It is God revealing himself to me. In it, he shows me. He's the faithful covenant-keeping God. Through my trust in his word, he includes me in his covenant. Therefore, I am who the covenant says I am. And I do what the covenant says to do. And I receive as my own everything the covenant says is mine. I am a believer, not a doubter. So I have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of God is delivering to the people of God. And I am not only a hearer. I do what I hear. And God performs his word in my life just like he promised. Amen. Amen. Just say thank you, Lord. Glory to God. All right, here we go. 2022, accelerated development in preparation for glory. All things aren't winding down. They're not finishing. God's completing to bring us into a new beginning. Amen. These are days of fulfillment that God has spoken of long ago. <clears throat> now, let me break that down again for you just a little bit, that title, because, you know, what, is, what does that mean, accelerated development for, in preparation for glory? Well, God said in 2022, and here we are, end of February, no doubt about it. It's come to you personally. It's been around you, and, and now it's on the world stage. Chaos has broken out. War has broken out, and God told you ahead of time. He's going to take advantage of this. He is going to take advantage. He is taking advantage of this chaos, this disruption, to complete the work he began in you, to accelerate the completion, the fulfillment of the work he began in you. Accelerated development. Why? Because he's preparing you for his appearing. The Lord Jesus is preparing you for his appearing, his glory, an aspect of his glory. The glory never ends. It goes from glory to, come on. But we're in this day, and that's what's going on. And he told you, look, your initial response is to deny yourself. Shut your flesh down. Get out of your head. Get out of your head. D divorce yourself from your feelings, thoughts, opinions, boom, you know, immediately a response. When you see it, shut it down. Put your body off. No, no, no. You can't, you can't feel the shakes. You can't get into that. No, 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 no. Instead, lean into. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Lean into God who's going and is by way of spirit. That's why you, if you're filled with confusion and distraction in your body and your mind. You cannot hear the Lord. He don't shout. He told you to still your mind and master your body so you can hear. You're not distracted because it you, you know what to do. He's making it known to you what to do. The exact perfect steps to take for your glory, your success, your victory through it all. Uh, the steps to take for your advancement, glory to God, and 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 we're, 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 that's what we're breaking down in this message uh, that we're continuing today. This is part four. If you missed any of it, you know you can check on our YouTube channel. But uh, let me just remind you that God has us on course for His glory, and whether you talk about. GPS or aviation, if you're on course, you better be ready for correction because without correction, you're not taking direction and you're lost. And no one is ever above correction. He's got us on course. We don't know what his glory is. We don't know what the plans he made for us are. He does, and he knows how to get us there. And he's got us on course. 
do not despise the chastening of the Lord. See, it, it seems like chastening to you because he's correcting you to direct you. And the tendency of the natural person, natural-minded, is to think, oh, this is hard. Oh, that's mean. Oh, it's, it's, it's punishment. It's correction. Mm-mm. It's correction for direction. So you do not get lost so that you do know what to do when it's time to do it. And I gave you the illustration of, you know, pilots and the air traffic control tower, you know, uh, the, the, the principles they operate by that are life and death. Life and death. Because anyone who takes this casually anymore, I think it's abundantly clear, they're, they're going to become a casualty. They're opening themselves up Un- unnecessarily needlessly because God's already made plans. He is not making plans. He is not figuring out what to do today. From our ancient past, he sat down because he finished them so that you could walk in them because he already worked it out. He's leading you to walk it out. Walk right out the fulfilled plans he made for you. A.K.A. his glory, A.K.A. what is exceeding abundantly above all, everything added up that you can think or imagine. But only according, see, we've got to put that back in, only according to the power, the dynamis that works in you. And that we know is by the Holy Spirit. You filled with the Holy Spirit. It's beyond time. For you be filled with the Holy Spirit, because it's only according to. It's not a, so people who say he's gone away or he's unnecessary, or whatever else. It, it's not like that to you. It is not exceeding abundantly above all to you. It can be, but it won't be until you submit yourself unto God. Just, just let go of the last of your plan. It ain't working, and he's you're being called to the one who's worked out all plans for your good. Amen. And uh, in these times, <laughs> and that chaos isn't just far away. It's, 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 it's right there with you. It's not time to freak out. No, no, no. You need to be asking God. We, we left off last week in, in James chapter 1, I believe. And, uh, you know, we traveled around it. But in verse 5, it says, if anyone lacks wisdom, what? Ask the Father, but you have to ask in faith, nothing wavering. What does that mean, in faith? Not according to your knowledge, not according to your thoughts, your opinions, not according to what other people say. Ask in faith from a God you can't see, expecting to receive wisdom from above that you can't get around here. Glory to God. Yeah, he'll prove his his existence to you if you dare. But it's by faith, so you got to get out of the body, you got to get out of your mind and ask by faith. And he gives it to you, gives that wisdom to you, gives you the understanding of what to do, gives you that direction in abundance, liberally, without ridiculing you, without putting you down. In the context in which that is written is in chaotic times. It's right after he told you in verse 2, 3, and 4, count it all joy when you come into a war. When you come into lack, when you come into, yeah, that's exactly what he said, count it all joy. That's when God said, count it all joy. Not happy, joy. Unleash the spiritual force that he birthed into you, joy. Because spiritually, not physically, intellectually, spiritually, you understand that the testing of your faith, are you in it or not, are you keeping it or not, produces endurance. And let Let endurance, patience, have her perfect work in you to make you complete. That's part of the completion process that God is doing. It is his prerogative, and I guarantee you he will lead you through the valley of the shadow of death because he's wise and you're not. Through, not to. If you die, it's your fault. He's leading you through. But see, David, no, mm, I ain't scared because he 
I'm with you. I don't have a plan. I don't see the way. I'm not the best warrior here. He said, no, you're with me. That, that's what comforts me. Talking about God. Amen. It's got to be the same. with you. Nothing's new under the sun. This is your turn. This is your chance. This is your time. What are you going to do? What are you going to prove? Your failing or God's victory? It's either or. It's nothing else. Amen. The time is now. This ain't no play thing. He told you all this. God's been real. You've been playing. Faith, I've told you for years, faith is really developed and given for one thing, war. I've told you for years. I, 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 don't, I don't, look, I get all this from, it's the wisdom of God. I get all this from the word, not your opinion. This is the victory that overcomes the world. The world is violent. The world doesn't have anything else but violence. But this is the victory that overcomes that violence. Yes. Even our faith, which is the same spirit of faith as God's that he gave to us. This ain't no play thing. God gave you peace. What, for good times? He knows what he's doing. Sometime you read about his, Jesus said it summed it up real quick, real easy. He said, in the world you're going to have war, death, destruction. You're going to have all kinds of trouble. But be of good cheer. In me, you have, no, you have peace. See, you're missing it. You have peace. Why? Because there's trouble. So you're going to get up in your flesh? You're going to get up in your body? You're going to get up in your head? Or are you going to get in the peace? Let peace what? Rule. He said, I gave you that peace because I've over, I've over, Jesus, I've overcome the world. Okay. Don't, don't be playing loose with him. This is not time to be casual. Well, I don't believe that. Well, I, you already heard what's going to happen. You're, you're casual. It's not going to stop because you don't believe it. It's not going to change because you don't believe it. How are you going to believe something you don't test? How are you going to believe something you don't try? You can't say you don't believe something. You ain't poked it. You're a liar. You can't say you don't believe something. You ain't walked out. You're punking out. <laughs> Amen. You just walking by something you don't know about. That's, that's trouble. Amen. Put up or shut up. Find out or, or not. This is how I came to the Lord. I came to disprove him. Now, I ain't telling you to do that, but I'm just being honest with you. But to disprove him, see, I had to say, I'm giving you my attention. I'm giving you, and I gave him a specific period of time. And I'm a, but see, for you to show yourself. Now, I'm not arrogant and stupid. So, so poof, magic, dragon, do this. No, I'm going to do everything you show me to do for that period of time, and that's what you got. Because these are your promises. Everything has a promise that he's going to fulfill. Not that I'm going to fulfill. I didn't get work nowhere near the end of that time. <laughs> so you better make your faith your own. See, I didn't come, I, you know, I, I, you know I, just, I thank God for it. I wasn't raised in church. I didn't come as a kid. I came as an adult. I could think. I had seen some stuff. I had experience. <laughs> Glory to God. He ain't ever wrong. But you can't sit there arrogantly and say, show yourself to me. He ain't going to do that. How dare you? And I didn't do that. I'm just sharing that with God. I didn't really, I didn't think all this out ahead of time. I just, I, I'm, 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 I, you know, I, I raised myself so I know how stuff works. You can't just say, I don't believe something. You don't know nothing about it. You ain't tasted it. I don't like that. No, you don't, idiot. You ain't ever tasted it. You can't say you don't like it. Eat it. Okay, you ain't heard that. You said it, and I don't like that. No, you don't even know. How about you don't like that? You ain't never let it cross your lips. You a lie. <laughs> Amen. God said, taste and see 
Come to me and taste and see. He literally said that. And so I did. I took a bite. So you got to do what he says to disprove him or to let him prove himself. Glory to God. And the reality is, Reggie, too many people are scared to do that. They're too scared. Because you're going to find out, and that's the end of your way. Unless you're just going to willingly. See, not now, now you do know and you're rejecting. <laughs> oh, boy. So, in everything that's going on around you, ain't no one else out there offering you a guarantee but God. I think I'd start there. I, I said, I think I'd start there with him. What's up with this? Amen. And, and do y'all remember the, the illustration I gave you last week, the air traffic control tower and the pilot? And, but then I told you about, you know, most it's all pilot error when these crashes happen. And do y'all remember I brought up a specific example? What, what example did I bring up? JFK Jr. And I went home that very afternoon, immediately after and turn my program on. Did you see it? Turn it on, and what comes up on the screen? Because I show you, I tell you, I, I, I don't lie to you. I, I don't go watch fake reality TV. I went, turn on the and it was the JFK investigation. Just like I told you. Somebody a prophet. Somebody's listening to the voice of God. You can too. It's time that you do. One wrong move these days. That's the point of no return. Ain't no mistakes no more. No more accidents anymore. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just I share that with you because that's like, <laughs> that's Lord. See, that, that, how you going to, come on. I don't go home every Sunday and turn that program on. It's not on all the time. Turn my TV on. Oh, there it is. Click. Went right to it. Because I do, I'll go home wondering, why, why, you make, why you make me bring up specific things? Like, I ain't got time to put, I ain't against nobody, I ain't coming with nobody. God says, you do, that's him telling you do what I tell you to do. You keep doing it. <laughs> I ain't never let you down. I'm always going to back up the word I give you. Them people need to see again and again and again and again and again. Because it ain't for you. It's for them. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you got. What fruit you got. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, I'll tell you when I got home. You can go back and look at the program schedules, call it the, 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 the network of all that stuff. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to get on it? These should be the greatest days of your life. Because <laughs> God is changing us to be like Jesus right now. He's changing. He's transforming us right now. He's completing the work that he began in us. See, when we came to Jesus, we didn't start nothing. He did. Jesus said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. God sent his son. The father started a work in you. And he said, Philippians 1, or it went over to Philippians chapter 1, verse 5, 6, you know, he who began it is going to finish it. Chapter 2 in Philippians 13 says, because he's effectively, he's actively at work in you both to change your want to and your ability to do his will. Glory to God. Imagine if you just like leaned into that. <laughs> he going to make your name great. He going to make you hide and all people around you. All people around you have to be blessed by you, as he said. Amen. Go to 1 John chapter 4. 16. 
or you can look at it. But I'm going to read another verse, too. In fact, look at it there, and uh, let's, let's read after you get to 1 John 4, 16. Let's read it together. God, see, God is changing us right now to be Amen. like Jesus. He ain't going to quit. I suggest you don't. Let's read 1 John 4, 16 together. It says, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him or her. Put up or shut up. A person can't claim to abide in God. There has to be evidence. Look at that again. See, John's distinguishing his group from everybody else. We have what? Known. And what? Believed. So we've come to know this. We've learned this. Everybody else, you know, everybody could, but they haven't. But we have, he says. What? The love that God has for us. That's where it all starts. If you don't receive that revelation. You can't learn about it. You can't feel it. God has to reveal and show you. That's what they're talking about. No, we're not talking about intellectually. Believe doesn't mean believe. It means faith. We have known here, not here, here. We've known and walked out. What? The love that God has for us. God is love. Love is God. So love is not love. Choke on that. Love is God, and God is love. And we're going to talk about it a little bit today because you, 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 you say the word love, you don't, know what, you don't know what you're saying. I don't know what you mean. You don't know what you mean. Define it. See, God just defined it. Love is not something I do. God says love is who I be. And then he says, and the one who stays, resides in me, in you who? Lord, love. The one who abides in me, well, then you see it in love. They abide in love and in God. And love is God. And God in that one. We're not talking about a feeling. We're not talking about an emotion. We're talking about God. And this love is agape. You're confusing it with fila, which is not a brand. Wake up. It is fondness, affectionate love. You feel it your car. You feel it them shoes. You don't love them. That's agape. That's God only. There is no agape on this planet except in you. You are agape. You're born out. He's changed you into agape. It doesn't come from this world, this planet. It is nowhere around here but in you from the planet heaven where you came from. You confuse it for storge. These are Greek words that they use in the scriptures very specifically so you don't confuse it with agape, with love. And storge, that's obligated. You know, it's like sibling, parent, child, child, parent, family, that obligated. That ain't, that ain't agape. And people even confuse it with eros. You know what that is. Erotic, pornography, that ain't God. And God ain't that. And you'll die with all those other loves. You'll die with Fila. You'll die with Storge. You will die. You will lose with Eros. You will never die. You will never fail with Agape. Why? Because it's God. And God don't die. And God don't fail. And you're supposed to abide in him. And him is love. And abide in love and Love is God. And in verse 17 says, herein is our love. Herein is God in us. Herein we're in God. Here it is. He's, he just told you about the abide in and abide in back and forth. Well, here it is. 
made complete. That word perfect means complete. Herein is our love made complete, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Whoa. Not, not we might be prepared. Not that, you know, okay, I guess we're ready. No, we'd have boldness in his judgment. See, a lot of people are arrogant, and they think they're ready for it, and they're going to get torched. Yes, people are so deluded today. They, they're, they're so whipped up in emotion and grandiosity. They've convinced themselves they're arrogant, they're ready, which means they're not because you hyped yourself up. <laughs> no, this boldness is just a knowing, a, a beyond calmness from the inside up, from the inside up. We have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is. It doesn't say as he was. It doesn't even say as he's going to be. There's no going to There's no pe- with God. He is. And it says as he what? Is and he is love. So are we in this world where there is not a shred of agape. But we are him. He is us. <clears throat> And it's all about glory, y'all. It's all about glory. Not religiously, not traditionally where they can't explain it to you. I've given you several attempts to try to explain it. Not that I have capacity to explain it all, but I've given, you know, living that life that's exceeding abundantly above all, everything you've imagined, everything you've dreamed, everything you've asked God for, all that added up is the subfloor of what he's bringing you into. The plans I've made for you, I know the plans I made for you, says the Lord, for your good, to give you a future, a destiny. He had to say not for evil because that's how you think. He doesn't. That glory. Jesus said it in John 17. He says to the Father, that glory you gave me, I have given to them. He didn't say he's going to. He says, I have given to them, uh, John 17, 22. Why? So that we may be made perfect in one. Well, who's God? Love. Who are we? Us. Till he's done a miracle and made us new creations. Birth himself into us. Birth loved into us. Now when we're complete, well, it seems to an ingredient that needs to be in there seems to be the glory of God. Why did Jesus say that? Well, I, the glory he gave me, I've given to them. So that, he told you why, so that we can be made perfect, 1 John 14. And here is the love of God made what? Perfect. The glory is a part of that. You walking in the fulfilled plans God made for you is a part of love being completed in you, agape being completed in you, God being fully formed in you. Help me, Holy Spirit. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, y'all, y'all need to get this and listen to it a whole bunch of times. Every part of this message. All right, so number two, the proof. Oh, what you got? See, if it's real, there got to be proof. The proof of <laughs> completeness is love. See, a lot of people run around and say, well, talking about what a great person of faith they are, what a, what a great man or woman of God they are. No, no one care about that. And that's a lie. It's not how great a person of God you are. It's how great God is in the person. You missed it. Rock fell on you. You didn't land on the rock. You've been hoodwinked, bamboozled. You run them up. It's the greatness of God, not a person. I said it's the greatness of God in the vessel. No one cares about the vessel. God in the vessel will make that vessel holy. Only God being in that vessel will make that vessel of any value. And everybody trying to flex the vessel. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The proof of your maturity in the Lord. The proof of your great faith. 
is the completeness of love, agape, God in you. So we're going to get a little picture of this today. We, we, we can't just, uh, if you're in 1 John, go to chapter 2. Um, mm-hmm. I just saw something that's erroneous in your, on your outline. The, the, the scripture reference there should be 1 John 5, verses 2 and 3. I don't know why it says 24. But, but go to chapter 2 of uh, 1 John. And uh, if you want to put your eyes on what, what I'm dealing with, uh, start in verse 15. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he's going he gonna to make it crystal clear what love is not so you can know what love is. And in verse 15, God says, love, now that word's agape, love not. That means have in first place. That means have as your God. That means it runs you. And he says, love not what? The world. This order. This world order. Neither what? The things in this order. The things that are making chaos, that are keeping people in bondage to this order. Because you're not of this world, just like Jesus is not of this world. We're in it, but we overtake it. We overcome it. We're not part of it. That's why he says, you don't, you don't love this order, this world order, nor the things of this order. Get ready. <clears throat> the love of the Father. If any person love the world, this order, what's it say? The love of the Father. It's not, we're not even going to talk about it. It's not even a debate. So if you loving all this stuff around here, like, the words people let out their face, then you don't know God. I didn't say it. I didn't write this. It's been here for thousands of years, folks. This has been the truth from the beginning. And what does the truth let us know? The love love of the Father is not it. Agape is not what? In us. But we just saw that it's supposed to abide, and we're supposed to abide. For all that is in this order, this world order, and then he defines it the lust of the flesh i gotta get me one of those and people's moods bounce up and down by however they think close or far they are from getting i gotta have one of those oh that's true they're in a bad mood. woke up this morning bad mood because of lust of something they want possessions oh they're in your house they're sitting next to you I didn't say on the left or right or in front or behind. Amen. Mad, depressed, because they ain't got something. Baby, you better understand the love God got for you. You being whooped and only have the sense to know you being led like a slave in chains. The lust of the flesh, oh, I apologize, that's really feelings, pleasure. Mm-hmm. Why don't she like me? Why don't he like me? Same thing. I'll twist it up and say, it takes me back. You better thank God I didn't text you back. You ain't got right motives. You don't, you don't, you don't even know what God's got decency to spare you from. Pleasure, the lust of the flesh, possession, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, status. You disrespect me? How how dare they do that to me? Don't they know who I am? Why is this happening to me? Wow. So he just said, for all that is in this world order, which is 
pleasure, possessions, and prestige is not of the Father, but is of this world order. And y'all claim you free. Uh, uh, we got to change the system. You, if you're in the system and you try to change the system, you're more blind than I thought. The only way you're going to change the system, you got to be outside it. You are not of this world in Christ Jesus. Need nothing in this world. And if you're loving it, God ain't in you. The person can say what they want to. God says, no. Nope. Now, let me take a time out right here and tell you, though. God didn't say pleasure is evil. God didn't say possessions are evil. God did not hear say, and prestige is evil. He said, this is all the world's consumed with. This is, they love it. It's their only priority. Oh, they dilute themselves. They lie on the people they say they care most about and blame them for jacking up their lives, because after all, I did it for you. <laughs> Completely selfish. That's what's happening. No, no, there's nothing wrong with pleasure. God guarantees you pleasure. God guarantees you possessions. God guarantees you prestige. Go back to Genesis. It started in the garden. He had to back it up with Abraham. You're the seed of Abraham, that the blessing come on us. God is serious about But see, it's all a result of him being number one all the time. That's what his trial, his test with Isaac was. He went up there and he killed Isaac in his heart. You don't raise the night, see, inside out. And he killed Isaac in, in reality. <laughs> That's why God's able to stop him. And then God said, now you've proven. You've got nothing above me. Therefore, nothing shall be withheld from you. Nothing. See, God gives you all things richly to enjoy when you trust him, rely on, depend on him. You can chase pleasure. You can chase possessions. You can chase prestige. You'll never have all of them, and you'll die. You might get one. You're really banging hard. You might get two. They ain't going to last. And it costs you everything really of value in your life. That's why he says he don't want it for you. He look at, look at verse 17. And the world, what? This, this order. Don't worry about it. You got to fight it. It's dead. Why don't you overcome it and lead the captives free, truly? Yeah, people don't like to hear that. Okay. Look, so he says, and the world passes away. It's dead. And what? The lust thereof, everything. But the one who does the will of God, the purpose of God, what? Forever. Glory to God. You must have a good place to shout. See, what he's talking to you about is when you read this, he's, a lot of people fall into this, oh, the love of the world, it's not in me. I love God. And they get, they get all religious and they, get, they fall into perfectionism. God didn't ask you to be perfect. God knows you're not perfect. He's perfect. But people do it because they start ranking themselves. I did, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not as bad as they are. Thinking that that means they deserve something. They're doing worse than me. Mm -mm. That's perfectionism. That's self-righteousness. Other people go the other way into criticism, which is really the same thing, just you're going around a circle. You know. Who they think they are? Why'd they do that? You know, I love God, so I don't know what they're doing. I would never. If you're talking about baby, you ain't in love. So they fall into perfectionism, criticism, and that just devolves into self-righteousness, self-centeredness. Blaming everybody and everything. Every situation's wrong. Everybody's against them. Amen. 
Why didn't you get me one? Why didn't you think about me? Why didn't, da, 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 da? Why didn't somebody do it for me? Why didn't it? Oh, I didn't do it because the conditions weren't right. That person is completely self absorbed fell into the pit of themselves, deflected any and everything. It's pride, arrogance. Any and any love, deliverance around them. Okay. See, God doesn't love you because you're good. Put down your self-righteousness. It stinks. It's filthy. God doesn't do you good because you're good. God doesn't love you because you're good. God doesn't bless you because you're good. God loves you because he's good. God blesses you because he's good. That's the true gospel, which religion is terrified to teach because then they can't control you. Got to make you guilty, this, this, and that. When you talk about church, you talk about ministry, you better take my name. You take Brit Christian Fellowship about your mouth. That's why it's Brit Christian Fellowship. It ain't no church. No, no, it's a body. If you, don't know what, if you know what church was, fine, but you don't know what church is, this is a body of the living Christ. God don't need you. You don't need me. He chose us because he's good. Not because you're good. Not because he needs you. Because he's good. Who you think's trying to keep you from discovering that? This world. And he tells you, it ain't your friend. <laughs> Stay away from it. Amen. Oh, glory to God. So that's what love is not. Be very clear about this. This is the root of all evil, the love of this world system, the desire for it above God that what it promises. You don't even think that the promise is a lie. This is what condemned us to begin with in Genesis. Eve got it run on her. You go back in Genesis and read it, you'll see the lust of the flesh. Oh, it's good to eat. The lust of the eyes. Look how pretty it is. Look how good it looks. And the pride of life. It'll make you wise like God. You already wise like God, he telling you. She fell for all three. The devil ain't got nothing new. All he can do is pervert and warp that which is true, which is God. And you're not ignorant of his ways. Just show you. So stop falling for the okie doke. When you try to prove how right you are, you got egg on your face, booger on your nose, your flies down, tissue paper. You look so stupid. Flailing at the air, it ain't nobody there. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Sit yourself down. Deny yourself. Fire yourself. Only God can exalt you. Who God exalts, that's it. They can't go down from glory to glory. Oh, my goodness. So uh, what is all from? If you want to learn about love, you can't go anywhere. But I go to Jesus. For my money, First John. Chapter 1 through 5, just. You want to know the ins and outs? I go to, I go to 1 Corinthians 13. That's, that's, that's a description. <laughs> you see how this thing works. Go to chapter 5. That's my point. Go to chapter 5. 1 John 5. And this is what love is. Y'all here? <clears throat> this is what love is. On your outline, it should say, just take the 4 and just move the 4 off. I'm going to go to verse 3 too, but that 4 shouldn't be there. Let's read it together. First John 5, 2. Ready? It says, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and his commandments. Well, let's talk about loving the children of God, Pastor. I know because he's running it both ways. You can't talk about you a believer. You can't talk about you a disciple of Jesus. Talking about you love the people, not unless you love God. 
Not unless you agape God. Not unless he is everything to you. And you have known and believed what? His love for you first. It's got to get in you first. Before you're going to do it right to what? Your covenant brothers and sisters of Christ. It didn't say the world. It says your covenant brothers and sisters. Amen. It didn't say the children of the world. It says the children of God. Stop disrespecting God, disobeying God, going out there, people you don't know. This is for you, 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 and each other in here. You're supposed to have love one for another in here, the children of God. And all people aren't the children of God, according to what Jesus said. He told people, you're your father, the devil. (laughs) And he told them why? Because you don't listen to my father's word. And whoever you listen to, that's who you serve. That's who you're of. So I'm not saying this. You're not saying this. doesn't matter what anybody else says. God said this. If you're going to love the children of God, you got to love God and his commandments. That's the true test. Jesus said, if you love me, John 14, you obey my ways. You follow my way. You live according to my guidance. Amen. This is better than y'all. y'all, y'all, y'all praise the Lord. You, you soak this up, you'll see. So here is love. This is love. By this we know that we agape. Love the children of God when we agape, agape. When we God agape. And keep agape's commandments. What are God's commandments? He always tells you. You, you can't fulfill God's commandments to yourself. Give me a commandment of God. Not one of them are to you. Don't lie. And it said one to another. It didn't say to the world. It said one to another. You can't do that as a monk taking a vow of poverty, hiding in a cave. You can't do that with yourself. You cannot obey God by yourself. You cannot love God by yourself. Give me another commandment. I'll give it to you because y'all ain't going to do it. Forgive. See, you ain't never going to do that. And then you want to know why? I'm just cutting to it because you ain't never forgiven yourself. You have not received the revelation. It's not an understanding mentally. You have not received the revelation of the love God has for you because he forgave you by giving himself. Mm. That's why people are so jacked up. They don't know their worth. Value is determined by what? Hmm? What you going to pay? Not the price tag. Value is determined by what you spend, what you pay. What did God pay to get you? Himself. And you say you love me. And you better give me. If you know what you're talking about, oh, look how quiet, uh huh. You give me a second. And the reason people are so jacked up because they don't know their own value. And so they lie on, well, God told us to love one another as we love ourselves. Well, if you knew your value, <laughs> God gave his only begotten son. The Father and the Son are one why they want to kill Jesus all the time. God gave himself. That's the value he spent on you. So you ask God, what am I worth? Me. The creator of creation. That's what you're worth. Oh, religion will never go there. But if you meditate on the word of God, like, oh, is this the word or what? Y'all all right? Verse 3 says, for this is what? The love of God. So if you run it all together, he's telling you backwards and forwards like we saw in chapter 14. For this is the love of God. What? That you love the children of God because you love God. You keep his commandments. You keep his commandments. How am I going to hold something against you and God forgave you? God gave himself, values you by paying himself for you. How am I going to hold something against you, God? Mm -mm -mm. Who forgave me, God? I keep his commandments. Do you? Prove it. 
I should see it. And the only way you can is if you know your value. If you see, that's what I'm trying to get you to. Get out of religion. Get out of your feelings. Get out of what you've deceived yourself you're doing. God ain't hurting you. He's delivering you. The truth doesn't kill. The truth makes you free. He's trying to show you the truth about yourself. So, oh, man, this thing, this thing can go. And I told you, work he's done to me, he's doing to you. So here we go. Y'all here? Yes. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. Let's talk about something. And his commandments are not. Oh, pat me on, I forgave him. Pat me on the back. Don't think so. Let me, let me impress you with how great a person of God I am, but I forgave. No, it's the greatness of God in you. He's, he's fully completed, completed in you because you ain't selfish and looking for glory. You ain't talking about, look what I did. You be talking about the Lord. Others will talk about what you did. Mm, praise the Lord. But if you look at what God, what love isn't and what love is, you can see it's God. Evaluates yourself. And look, you don't get better. You have to obey God. He's completing the work that he started. How did he start? He caused you to be born again. Not made again, born. And you're a little child. You're a little babe in Christ. You're babes in Christ until he develops you. It has nothing to do with time, chronology. It has to do with what we're talking about right here. It could happen like that. It could happen in 50 years. It's dependent on the individual. It could never happen. That's why I believe in remedial classes up here. <laughs> Trying to give people a chance. Amen. See, bottom line, we can see it. Do you live a lifestyle that honors, prefers? Write down Philippians chapter 2. Uh, uh, I think verses 3 and 5. Does your life honor, prefer, and think of your brothers and sisters in Christ before yourself. That's what Philippians 2, 3. There's another way of looking at this. This is the love of God. It makes it very clear. Do you honor, prefer, and think of your brothers and sisters before you make a decision, ahead of yourself, before you make that purchase, before you go there, before you say that, before you do that? Do you consider your partners at Birth Christian Fellowship first? Not the people you're dealing with in a minute. Your covenant brothers and sisters. Your blood covenant brothers and sisters. I told you, I'm, 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 I'm teaching better than y'all. Mm, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Okay, I got to wrap it up. Yeah. Ah, praise the Lord. Time is gone. Okay, give, give, give me another few minutes here. Look. It's more than an ocean. Um, Paul grew into this. Peter grew into this. You have to grow into this. Or God has to develop this in you. They would grab Peter. They threatened him. We don't know what the threat was. We're going to kill you. We're going we're to we're skin you alive. You know, we're going to do it slowly. We're going to take your head off. We don't know what it is. But the Sanhedrin religious folk took him and others, took Peter, and threatened him. Don't you teach by this name no more. And he said, look, do what you got to do, but I'm doing it. That's love. That's what we're talking about here. He says, do your worst, do your best. I'm going to do what I do. If you do it, I'm going to do it. If you don't do it, I'm going to do it. Who that sound like? Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. You, they got some other names to you back in Daniel. King, do what you're going to do. And if you don't do it, it don't matter. We ain't doing it. We got God first. How'd that work out for them? Yeah. Glory. Yeah. The king looked in there and said, there's God walking around in there with them. And he elevated them to being in charge. Peter didn't die. Peter went skipping on around and got elevated. See, you're, you're, you ain't come into nothing yet. Because you're too scared because you, you're self-preservation. You're thinking about yourself. You still love the world. 
it's one of the three or all of the three. You're still loving the world because you hasn't. You ain't giving yourself away like that. You, you sitting there, well, if I get arrested, what will people think? What? That's when you're in the glory. That's when it really begins. Not when you say, I love you, Jesus. This is when things get cooking. This is the church. <clears throat> it, okay, I'll do this. It's, it's, it's African American History Month, Black History Month. It, it, it should be Black Christian Month, period. No, it, okay, anyhow, okay, I ain't got time for that. Let me hear him. Y'all heard of Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King. He gave great speeches. And you all might have your favorite. You might think this one's great, this one is. The most powerful thing he ever said was, I've been to the mountaintop. And then I have a dream and all that. I said the most powerful thing that man ever uttered was in that speech. It wasn't at church. It was in a demonic hall. You know, it was in a demonic hall with what? A bunch of trash people. Garbage workers. <laughs> he was hot that night. He stepped to the mic. And this is what he said. It don't matter with me now. He had, he had been completed. He stepped into the glory. He told you, I've been to the mountain. And y'all got excited. Oh, it sounds so good. He was testifying. He wasn't talking about you. He wasn't talking to you. He said, I don't know if I'm going to get there with you, and I don't care. I've been to the top, and my eyes have seen the, glo the glory, the glory, the glory. He a preacher. Ain't no politician. And he came, whoo. That's the most powerful thing he ever said. It don't matter with me now. Okay, I could put Acts 20, 24 right there. See, that, that's Peter and him right there. Uh, we, I don't count my life dear to myself. You could do all this, talk about all this, but I do not count my life dear to myself. <laughs> and he said that I might finish my course with joy. God's got you on course. And this is what it looks like. I'm, I'm, I, I told you I'm in the glory. It don't matter what you want to make your move. It ain't going to work. It don't matter to me for a long time. That is dangerous to the enemy. That makes the enemy flee in terror. It don't matter to me now. I don't count my life dear to myself. I might finish my course with joy. The ministry that God has for you, that's not, that's not necessarily preaching the word. But that he might bring you into his glory. His glory, which is the fulfillment of things beyond you can dream about. Living by love, you can't fail to reach glory. Not faith. Faith works by love. Living in love. Living by love. You can't but reach glory. Because love never fails. Because God is love and God never fails. Go to Ephesians 3 real quick. And I'm going I'm to end with this. <laughs> glory to God. Ooh, don't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountain. And I've seen. He says, it's too late. <laughs> he could not be stopped. Oh, they shot him the next day. And you talking about him today. And his message is resonating today. What about you? We can't remember what you did yesterday. Stop being scared. 
Stop loving this world. Sister. That is proof and evidence. He like unto Jesus. Jesus, same way. That's why <laughs> read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 yet again today. Them fools fell into the trap, the plan of God, by crucifying the Lord of glory. Them fools stopped putting a bullet in him. No, it just inflamed the whole thing. Count not your life. You don't even know what your life is. Dear to yourself. It's your bondage. It's what's been holding you back. I've been preaching this to you, teaching this to you for 22 years. And people talking about, I'm just not receiving anymore. I'm not growing anymore. I'm, yeah. You ain't ever heard this nowhere. And I'm getting it straight out the word, giving you contemporary You quit. You sat down. You got scared. You couldn't take it. You ain't cut for the. And that's all right. You a tear. You ain't a wheat. That's all right. Can't blame you for not being something you aren't. We don't hate the tears. We hate the enemy. You listen to the words of the enemy. We're listening to the words of God. To die is gain. And it ain't never been proven wrong. That's the greatest deliverance that man had. He's sitting here carrying you on his back. All the threats, all this being shot in the back by his friends. Gaming him in the back. Yeah, all those people came up back. All, you know, you know, made political and everything else. Shoot, he said, I'm done with that. Glory <laughs> to God. In the presence of my finish my course. Shit for them to run with. He said it in that space. That's why people say he was prophesying. He was in the glory of God. I may not get there with you, but it don't matter. It don't matter with me now. We as a people shall see it. I submit to you. What people was he talking about? Because his whole message wasn't about no black folk. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Yeah, y'all didn't like that, did you? Y'all didn't like that. Why do you think he's got monuments? Why do you think he's in the, got the museums? Why? Read his words. Same reason you, so you didn't like that, because it's got to be about black folk. If it's just about black folk, it won't work. Black lives matter equally. You can't stand that I say that, but it's the truth. I didn't say two. That's dismissive. That's dismissive. Black lives matter equally. You think you got something? You think you got something? Equality. That's what he taught. You better read his, you better go back. You, th you think you like his speeches. You better go listen to his speeches. People he was talking about, I'm convinced of all my, uh, uh, the children of God, the disciples of Jesus Christ, not a subgroup. <laughs> Maybe y'all going to go back and look at that message today. Look at look, look what he said. You can see it in his face. I remember when I heard it. I wasn't there. I was, I was, I was born that year. Later. A few months. But I remember when people, you know, I, I could, whoa, 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 whoa. He stood there. Because it wasn't church or nothing. He was restraining himself. And it turned into church, so to speak. Because after he said, he said, look, look, look. He just got to. He said, it don't matter with me now. And it just, boom. And he told them the truth and dropped the mic. When he says, my eyes are seeing the coming of the Lord, that's all he said. And walked away. Paul said, do your worst. Do your best. Peter said, I don't know. Why, why are you trying to figure out if I should obey you or not? I'm going to be over here doing what my daddy said to do. Ain't nothing you can do about it. You in Ephesians 3? For this cause, Pastor Rick bows his knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth, not the little subgroup you want, is named. That God would grant you bereft according to the riches of his glory. He's going to glorify you to be strengthened with might by his spirit, not in your head, not in your feelings, not in your body, but in the inner man. Why? So that Christ, the anointing, dynamis, the power of God may what? Dwell in your hearts by faith. It's the only thing that pleases God. That you being rooted, planted, be here, stay here, planted, rooted and 
grounded, foundation, settled in love, in God, in agape. Not your feelings, not your dreams. Your dreams are pitiful compared to the plans God has finished for you. His glory, the riches of his glory he's bringing into that you may be able to comprehend, grasp, get a whiff of, get a little revelation of with all the saints, what is the breadth? Isn't this what John talked about over there? What is the length? What is the depth? What is the height? And to know what? The love. We know and we believe the love God has for us. We ain't trying to prove we love him, John said over there. No, we understand the love he has for us. You might comprehend with all the saints, the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes your head. It's above your head. You can't describe it. That you might be filled, glory, with all what? Come on, you're the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do. Now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above everything. That you ask or think, but it's only if you let him in. It's only according to you being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's only according to the power, the dynamis that works in you. That dynamis can never be and is never in Scripture, separated from the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Then there's nothing. There's nothing and no one that's going to stop God in his plans for you. He started the work. He is completing it. And you walking in the love of God when it don't matter to you no more. You didn't get that. That's how you know you're there. You won't care about anybody says. You won't care about what you hear. You won't care about what you see. You're only moved by God. You're only moved by his promises. You're only moved by your covenant. And he always causes you to triumph. He always makes you successful. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. For the one who comes in must believe that he is, and there it is, and he's a rewarder, not a subtractor, a rewarder of those who diligently, not casually, I'll kill you, diligently seek him as for hidden treasure. Oh, he guarantees you pleasure, possessions, and prestige because money makes a poor God especially compared to the true, only living God who has love for you. Father, we bless you, praise you, and thank you for your word today, giving you all the glory, all the praise, all the thanksgiving for what it is that you have sown into our lives now. I decree that it has been sown with understanding. I believe it has been received with understanding. So I declare what you say, Lord, that it Three turns to you, accomplishing everything that pleases you and prospering into every single one who receives it. That you were taking us from glory to glory to glory, kingdom without end. What a privilege! What an honor, Jesus. You're the head, we're your body. You came and you gave us life more abundantly. You gave us your life. You sealed God's word, his promises with your life. Glorify yourself with us. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for being loved. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for choosing us because you are good, because of who you are. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for blessing us because you are good. Satan, it's a wrap for you. You are finished. You're defeated and you're far beneath our feet in Christ Jesus. We rebuke you. This is kingdom business. It is off limits to you. We command you to leave and be gone. And anything you've attempted to steal, anything you've attempted to destroy, we declare and command you take your hands off of it. And we decree restitution, restoration, jubilee in Christ Jesus. Thank you for our eternal fulfilled inheritance in Christ Jesus, Lord, with Christ Jesus, our joint heir. And everyone who's in agreement with this prayer in Jesus' name, say amen. amen. Come on, just praise him.